you guys see that mountain lion thing in the next door? Uh -huh. The joke one? The joke uh -huh. one is pretty good. The joke one? Yeah, there's one in there that says, um, uh, found cat. You know, the little often posts so yeah. like, hey, we found yeah. a dog. Because found a cat, and there's a picture of a small mountain lion in the back of the show on its head. It's really funny. It's like, are you okay? So I need this. Uh, the, the kitty that might be in Obsidian. Yeah, right. It's now clean and ready for pickups. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? I know. Did you see a video? Oh, yeah. You're going to have to write your friend. That's my friend, too. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, do you want to do it? I was thinking of it before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one, too. This one? That was too. Oh, maybe not this one. Is this a new one? Wow. Oh, that's a new one. No, that's a new one. Do that one. Across the front door. Okay, we're ready. Yes. All right, I'll, uh, we have a quorum. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first item is to adopt, adopt the agenda. Motion. Motion to adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Um, item number two, a public comment on non-agenda items. Linda, do you have something you'd like to say to us? Yes, please. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of the sexual attack that happened in April here at the community center. And um, I was just wondering, I mean, a lot of us, and nobody knew about it until it was in the newspaper yesterday, the paper yesterday. Um, what I was wondering is, okay, this was a, a drunken 19-year-old boy who sexually attacked a 16-year-old girl and he had a Glock gun to her head when he sexually attacked her. My question is, what since April, what has been done to, I don't know how you can prevent a situation like this happening again unless you have a sheriff, unless you check for guns, unless you have somebody there watching for drunk people, I don't know what's in the contract because there. Um, when I tried to look at the contract for uh, renting out this room or the recreation hall, it's not online. It says it's, it says you are not allowed to read this. So I don't know what the contract says, but I was wondering what is this is recreation, okay? Parties rented out, money coming in. This is recreation, and I hope that somebody is going to be doing something about the safety of our community, especially a 16-year-old girl. So it's just something that I think once the community finds out about, there may be other people besides me that might bring it up and say, hey guys, what are you going to do about it? Thanks. Thank you. Can I call off of that? Sure. Yeah, I think it's a good point. Um, I read about it in the paper, like by the rest of us did, but Luke or Eric, has there been any, other than the investigation that happened, have we changed any policies or anything based on that? Do we feel like that was a, I mean, it feels like it was just a random act, but was there anything learned from that? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, John, thanks. So, in the wake of that, and we definitely have been reviewing our building rental policy. Um, we are going to be coming to the commission and eventually the board with um, some proposed changes we want to make uh, from the staff level to, um, or at least some recommendations to our building rental policy uh, in terms of trying to cut down on any sort of negative elements coming into the community as a result of private parties that we are allowing. Um, so in the wake of that event, um, what we did do and we have been doing is we haven't had uh, any more bookings until we sort of figure out what we want to do and drafting up kind of a means to move forward with that. So we haven't taken any reservations since that happened. Um, there have been some on the books. We have had, you know, we book out a year in advance, so there have been other private rentals of the building, but we've been drafting up, doing a lot of research with the other uh, similar facilities in Marin and talking to a lot of our colleagues in different rec departments and seeing what are some things that they're doing, what are they requiring, and what are some things we should potentially adopt and be coming pretty soon with um, at least our recommendations and um, some discussion questions that we need to look at. So, thank you. Can I follow up? That particular 
event. We, we knew about it pretty quickly. Uh, cooperated with law enforcement. It was a private event. It wasn't a district event. It didn't involve our staff. It was actually booked as a uh, Sweet 16 birthday party for up to 50 people, family, and friends. Um, obviously, had a lot more than that. I actually kind of did this particular parent that's kids, other younger siblings enrolled in a camp, so on and so forth. So it's a uh, I don't know that you're going to, you know, outside of just saying no rentals. Um, but to Luke's point, we spent a lot of time looking at it and when it's done and ready, we'll bring it to you guys and take a look at it. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, item number three, draft minutes of our July 23rd Park and Recreation Commission meeting. Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Okay, item number four. Uh, oh, excuse me. We didn't ask for comments from the public. Oh, pardon me, Linda. Thank you. I'm sorry if I'm disturbing you with that. No, Linda, go ahead. I just want to make sure that, um, okay, public comment on non agenda items in your, you're talking about the draft minutes, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, the Park and Recreation Commission. Yeah, Park and Recreation, correct. Um, I just want to make sure that. The change has been made. <coughs> I already mentioned this at the board meeting, um, the last board meeting. The comment, my comment about regarding pedestrian walkway in the panhandle area, the, in the panhandle area was incorrect. And what I stated a month ago at this meeting was about my injury when I tripped and fell over the two and a half inch sidewalk in the pedestrian lane that was right next to Miller Creek Road. Okay, wasn't didn't have anything to do with me tripping and falling in the Panhandle area. It was on the pedestrian lane where the sidewalk was raised two and a half inches. So I just want to make sure that that is going to be changed because I did mention at the board meeting last time that this statement is incorrect. Thank you. Okay. Do we need to make a Motion to modify the minutes to reflect that. We should have a motion to modify. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> All right, now we'll move on to number four draft minutes of the August 13th board meeting. Uh, review of this item. Any comments? I think I'm going to pass out from the uh, fumes. No, I, I have no problem. Close yeah. the door or something. No comments? Okay. Thank you very much. Linda, would you like to say anything about the draft minutes to the... No, thank you. Wording. Okay. Uh, item number five. The Park and Recreation Commission bylaws to be proposed with an amendment. Um, obviously, I hope you all know that that did go to the board and was not voted on. It was not approved. Not approved. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, if I may, um, there was um, there were four board members present, and so you would need three votes to pass. If it's two votes, it would be stay. And. Um, so there was no second. If, if I had given a second, it would still not have changed anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe, I got the sense that the board wanted um, more specificity in terms of you know, the planning. Um, are you going to forego um, in-person visits altogether and just do the presentation from uh, Luke? Um, it also seemed like um, there were voices that said that um, we rely on your eyes, you know, for feedback on what's what's happening out there in the community. Um, so, yeah, I think that's basically it. The, um, you know, maybe the schedule is it only in person or only visual or both? Like. It, it seemed like it was too vague, basically. Um, we don't have that proposal that we 
we have with your art? What's that? The proposal. Yeah, I put it right in my face. Oh, it? Mm -hmm. oh, it is in your face. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, I, I watched the meeting, oh, um, so I, I heard all that commentary, and uh, I just say a couple of things. You know, as I mentioned last time, I used to do those site visits when I was in the city, or people would do those for me, and I found them unhelpful um, because as the supervisor of the area, I, I was well aware of all the situations that were pointed out to me. It was really just a matter of could I fit them in the priorities that I had. And the people doing the evaluations never understood the priorities I had or the full scope of work. Same as I don't understand your full scope of work. So I think I, a couple of things. One, I'd ask you, uh, Luke, and the district, is it valuable for the Luke or the district for us to do these site visits? Like, I, I felt like from last time it wasn't necessarily a value to you. Um, also, when, when we were doing them in the past, and I've done them now for three years, I felt, I didn't feel like, I didn't really feel like we accomplished much, to be honest with you. I felt like it was really pointing out obvious things that you already knew about. Um, but I did feel like the July meeting, last month's meeting, actually felt like I was more engaged in that than I was in any of the site visits, because I felt like it was much more directed from your perspective. And I felt like we talked about some real things, which was, that was good. So, um, I, I don't, I don't have a strong, personally I don't feel strongly one way or another if we have the presentations in here or do it in the field. I, th I think there is the real issue though that we've had a hard enough time maintaining civility in this room, much less um, a site visit, which is a real challenge for us. And so if we were to do site visits, um, how would the district ensure that the members of the public that attended maintain the Brown Act, Robert's Rules. It's not a two-way conversation. Um, when I do these types of park commission meetings for my <clears throat> day job, that's that's the first. And, and when I did one about six weeks ago in um, on site, that's the first thing that's announced to the public. And we had like ten members of the public come, but the first thing that's announced is this is not an opportunity for two-way conversation between the public and commissioners or staff. And that was respected. Um, I don't feel like we have that luxury here. So if we, again, I guess I'll throw it back on the district, if we are to do those, how would the district maintain that level of stability? So those are my thoughts on that. You and me. Well, I'll answer the first part since that was so sure directly to me. Um, thanks, John. Like the, as far as the um, how helpful the, the site visits are to the for the staff, I do appreciate the commission's input. Um, I think to your point, when you're just simply looking at a park or a pool or a building on a given day of the year, um, yeah, there's going to be certain things you see. Oh, that you know there's chipped paint on that fence or what's going on with that bush, you know, those like little things that are going to catch your eye that, you know, yeah, we'll be addressing that, we'll look like that maybe a month from now or, or a couple weeks from now or whatever. But there's also, a, there's more of a big picture, I think, benefit to what do we want to see for this facility moving forward? Um, what's the long-term, what are the long-term goals? Um, if there's like a really deficient maintenance issue, uh, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll probably be uh, addressing that, but I don't see them as having no value. I think it's just the way that we approach them uh, could be of more value depending on how you know what that approach is. But I think the site visits, in my experience, which has been limited, that we've been doing this for you know the last year, has been you know one sort of points out a few things and we talk about it a little bit and move on. There's not a lot of uh, doesn't go a lot deeper or a lot longer term. And I think that's something that that for the staff, the commission's weighing in on. What do we want to see here? What's the vision for this facility? What's the what? What are we trying to achieve long term? You know, what are the struggles in the short term? That's something that, think that is valuable, and so you know, a way to, if we can do that. I, I like the idea of the flexibility that was being proposed to the board in terms of 
maybe a presentation is appropriate, maybe a site visit is appropriate, maybe everyone goes on their own time and comes back with questions. You know, just leaving it open to everything's a little bit different. Um, so, you know, I think that, that that does give some some flexibility for not every facility is exactly the same and needs the same approach. I also think month to month, sometimes a month isn't enough time um, if, if we're going to do a dedicated presentation and look at all the you know ins and outs, maybe that's too quick. Maybe that's fine. I don't know. I think that there's there could be some more discussion on that. But. Eric, I'm not I don't um, I agree with Luke. I you know some of the stuff I do think is helpful. Um, some of it, to your point, John, is stuff that we're already very well aware of and some of the suggestions that come out of it are practical and some are anything but practical given what we have to work with and what we can and can't do. The, uh, in terms of uh, the, the presentation, I thought that that was an interesting exercise for us in Fort Loop because it kind of forced us to really kind of sit down and think about things a little bit more and, and how we can present it a little bit better. And I do agree that I thought that it actually produced very worthy information and it was an engaging platform. Uh, I think the lists that we create can be helpful. A lot of the things on that list are things that are already on our kind of little internal mental lists. Um, and then some things are good for, okay, we have our priorities, but if we have time, let's try to tackle a few of these things too. Uh, and then some of these other things, to Luke's point, you know, kind of turn into more long range goals if resources present themselves. Um, in terms of civility, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I, I don't know that we are afforded that luxury here. No matter what we say or do, right. because you, uh, it's just been proven that the, there's certain people that have a tendency to attend meetings that really don't care about that. And, okay. and, and they, well, I honestly don't care, but to just tend to disregard it or not have the same definition of it as, uh, as we do. I mean, and, and I hate to say it, but the board meetings are much worse. Um, yet I know on those tours specifically have been some of our worst incidents with the commission. Um, and I don't think that uh, attempting to practice civility has proven to work yet by any stretch. So I don't have an answer for that. No, and that's I, and I don't know that that can be solved, to be entirely honest with you, outside of, uh, okay, do we want to go the route of bringing in sheriff deputies and having people... It's expensive. Physically, yeah, it is. And having people physically removed from meetings. I would like to personally try to avoid that, but I will also say when we had sheriff deputies at the board meetings, they were uh, some of the more uh, efficient uh, board meetings we had. Well, that's this idea was born out of that that context of maintaining civility. When I, when I watched the meeting at the board, that really wasn't talked about at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make sure that really that's where this is coming from. Right. Well, and that was also why I suggested that have everybody watch this clip so that we yeah. can kind of get a first-hand account because yeah. I wasn't uh, obviously didn't do a very good job at uh, relaying the commission's thoughts on it outside of the practicality of presentations over tours. So just, again, I don't feel strongly that I don't want to do that. I, I, I can do those on-site meetings. I think if we do go that route, then the district needs to do something to ensure meeting the quorum. Because uh, there really has been nothing put in place to maintain that in the past. I would tend to agree with John. I can take a walk or I can sit here either way. Um, it's, it, it seems that the panhandle is the primary location where things just go off the deep end. We may be able to segment that into, say, four different stops. You know, if we do the mini park, have commission discussion, and then public comment, and then we move from there to X, the fireman picnic area, and have 
board discussion, or commission discussion, and then public comment. And then go the next 100 yards and, you know, maybe if we can break up, you know, break it up into sections, then we might, we might be able to maintain a little more civility that way where there are, is a definite time and space for commission discussion and then a public comment and then a definite time and space for commission discussion and then another public comment. I don't think we've had those issues looking at the pool or out at the upper Lucas Valley Park or even really as many just walking, you know, the, the front of the park here. But, you know, I, I think we should look for what language we could change and maybe send it back to the board and maybe just in an effort to maintain civility we would look for these options or yeah you know maybe we could you know kind of start off with something you know just kind of set the tone with that way so that it's clear you know we're looking for options to do the tasks that we're assigned to do or we're volunteering to do but able to do them in, in an environment that's you know, conducive to us sticking around. <laughs> yes. A um, few items. First of all, maybe because where we are in the year, um, doing on-site inspections now will be more and more challenging. Maybe we should consider this year as a test or a slash trial run, continuing with Luke's presentations and see, you know, how, what kind of uh, feedback there is, what kind of dynamic there is, what kind of information Luke benefits from, uh, the commission benefits from. And um, going forward, I understand your concerns about disability. Um, we could be as detailed as to, um, you know, outline a, a meeting process for on-site visits, um, where, like you're saying, the you know, public comment would be contained to either the beginning or the end or both, but not during. Um, but you know, that maybe just giving it a trial run this year would be an interesting exercise, and it would be within, you know. It would be an opportunity to basically f fill out the new situation and see how it's working out. And then um, going forward again, uh, should we go back to the on-site visits, then it would be a more specific language in the bylaws, or um, you know, go um, exclusively with the presentations. I feel like there was a representative of the commission missing during the board meeting to present the case for this bylaws change. And I think it, it would have, the vote might have gone very differently if we had all the points that you're bringing up right now. So um, if you are going forward with changing the bylaws right now and, and wanting to do it permanently now, I would strongly suggest one of you attend the board meeting to kind of lay out the reasons. Because you, you make a very valid point, I understand. And um, like you two, I really don't feel strongly one way or the other. I was the one I think who originally suggested the visit. It was because of the commission being on the young, younger side in terms of the um, tenure. tenure. Um, uh, wanting to learn more about the community. Because I, honestly, I do not go to Creekside Park ever really. And um, it was an opportunity to see the, the sites. But I understand also your you know, point of view, and I respect your experience professionally, saying that it's a very different engagement um, when it happens through presentation versus site visit. So that's my five cents. Anything else you Thank you. I'm, I'm new to this commission, so I'm available um, to, to do either. And I think. Uh, you know, not, not having the present for the history, I don't have much comment about, about the other topics. Um, but um, just from being available to, you know, to, to, to help go forward, I'm available for either option. Okay. 
John, anything else? Okay. I mean, so I guess what we're looking at is then modifying the language, or? For this evening or for future? I mean, if you want to do it this evening, you can. Uh, we'd need to scrap something together or to Isabella's point. I think, uh, you know, we've gotten so far into the year that uh, just kind of moving forward and taking a trial shot at these presentations, which once we go through a few of them, uh, kind of during the next several months leading into winter, you might feel, okay, well, I want to go back to doing tours anyway. I don't, I don't. I guess I would question whether do we have the ability to not meet the set responsibilities of a summer site visits and just choose to continue on the path that we're looking to take? Uh, well, in the same way you have an ability to set site visits and then just have commissioners decide that they don't want to participate in those either, uh, is it, which I actually see as a real possibility. Uh, not that I'm encouraging the behavior, right. but I'm just speaking right. realistically, right. Exactly. Uh, at which point you're not having any level of a meeting. Then you don't have a meeting at all. Right. Um, the other thing in listening to you, John, that I thought too is, uh, and I don't know if it would help, but even starting the meeting 30 minutes earlier. It allow you time to have those kind of stops and breaks and because uh, you know, a lot of times we're just trying to push it either in the later months racing darkness or because we've got the rest of the schedule or it's cold or whatever the case may be. And if you start, especially say at the Pan Am, which is a longer walk and takes a little bit longer to get through, you start that one at 6.30. I don't know what availability is for commissioners or Staff is 6:30 versus 7, but uh, that might help alleviate a little bit there too, and it allows you time to build in those. Okay, we looked at this spot. Is there any comments about this spot? Move on to the next spot. Uh, okay, any comments from here to there, or where we are right now, and so on and so forth. It just gives you a little bit more time to do that as well, while still trying to maintain it as a proper uh, meeting. To uh, John Campos' point which it is, I mean, it's an agendized notice meeting, it's just not held in a formal room. Not that this room's all that formal, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, so, you know, I would, I guess for me, what I would suggest, and obviously it's the commission's decision, is uh, probably best to revisit this, yet I would appreciate it some commissioners, and you know, there was a, a board member or two who said that they would uh, think about it. Yeah, to Isabella's point, I don't disagree with her. I think some of it was just kind of in the language, maybe a little bit too, of uh, uh, maybe it seemed vague a little. I don't know. I don't know that bylaws should get incredibly detailed, specific either, but uh, just something I think that assures that, uh, at least on an annual basis, there's going to be some level of review of our sites and facilities, whether that be physical or whether that be via presentation. And this didn't really have that because it did take out the annual part of it all, too. So I think that that hung up uh, at least one of the directors, um, possibly. But again, I don't necessarily want to speak for them. I, I, I agree with Isabella in that I think that they do understand the concerns that have presented themselves during the past tours. Uh, and, you know, I point the finger at myself. I don't know that I did a really great job uh, expressing why the commission was doing this outside of looking at it more from a uh, operational uh, and information gathering standpoint as opposed to, uh, to John Campbell's point, the practical reality that uh, we have had incidents on these. Uh, and I would hate to see a meeting going and somebody just absolutely refuse and then you wind up just saying, great, we're adjourning this meeting. And then you're 10 minutes into it and say, we're done, we're out. If you're not, you know, I mean, that's kind of your only real solution yeah. there. Yeah. Outside of, uh, I mean, we really want to be, you know, start calling sheriffs and all that or just say, fine, we just won't have this meeting. And you just end it right there. I, I guess the other issue I'd like clarification on is whether these presentations from staff place additional 
I mean, I, obviously it's additional work, but is it is it something you guys are able or willing or you know to do, or, or are we just putting too much of a load for you? To, I mean, because my intention isn't to pass the buck and say, <laughs> you know, you do it and we'll talk about it. You know, so I I, I just need to hear that as well, whether. You know, from your perspective at that table, whether this is doable or not, and, and whether you, you know, no, primarily calls on with so. Well, yeah, I think um, you know, having gone through the making up a PowerPoint for the mini park and panhandle, um, sort of the template for the things that I think are relevant to talk about, and then looking for feedback. And you know, we had a lot of discussion at the last meeting, which was great. But about anything else that, that the commission wanted to see um, or information that I left out or whatever, um, I'm not sure we talked much about that. We got pretty hung up on signage. Um, or, uh, but the, the thing that I'm thinking is uh, I've got a template to work with, and that's easy, pretty easily adaptable to some of the different facilities with some tweaks. But I'm um, looking at like a year from now, going back to the mini park and the panhandle. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how much of that's really going to be drastically different, you know, in terms of doing a new presentation. I mean, there'll be some new, some new maintenance issues that we've dealt with. There'll be some new plants. There'll be some new, uh, you know, whatever it is. But I, I guess I, I, I don't know if it's gonna be all that interesting to to do an annual presentation on the on the parks unless there's something that's changing or updated or you know something remodeled. So I don't know. I, you have to be seen, but I. I it's, I'm happy to, to continue to present on the different facilities that we tour, typically. I think it's a valuable thing to have and to be able to update as, as there are updates, and I'm happy to bring you know, anything updated to the commission, but um, yeah, just, a, just a thought I had. Just in terms of workload, though, I think, you know, and then Luke and I talking about it before, that first one is why we came back afterward and said, but can we not do these during the summer months? Right. Because they're, it, it, Times are crazy enough, and you never know what, you know, by 10 a.m., your plan for the day is destroyed, and you're dealing with whatever it is that summer brings, whether it's the 500 kids running around or the pool uh, issues or anything else. Uh, I, I would still say, for Luke's benefit, if we do presentations, it is a little bit easier for us to accommodate on a workload side outside of summer. I agree, or at least if, if we're not worried about being out there at seven o'clock during daylight hours, then um, maybe spreading them out not every month, but having maybe one between or every other would be helpful to give some more time to, to do something more thoughtful. Um, I think it would be helpful, uh, especially because we're not dependent on, on daylight for not doing the same visit. Thank you, I appreciate it. At the end of the day, like the way I see our role is we're an advisory board. I want it to be helpful to you. Like John said, I don't want to create more work. So whatever form that is, is help, that's helpful. That's what I want to do. And if it is site visits, then, then I want the district to recognize that we've had a challenge with that. I just to answer that, I think that's great. I, I do think we're on two sides of the same coin in terms of um, creating clarity in terms of what is the commission wanting to accomplish with this with either the site visits or visiting the sites virtually through presentations that will help on our end staff to then tailor whatever the approach is to you know what information you're looking to gain from this what information you're looking to pass on to the board um, what questions you have what plans we're trying to make um, so I guess you know, there's one uh, way to do it that that's more convenient for staff, but there's also what's the thing that's going to accomplish the goal that the commission has with these site visits in the first place. I, I'd like to know that going into it so I can you know best approach whatever we're doing. I do think it's helpful though. I think the presentation personally is helpful. I think it allows us opportunity to document things. And I think as Luke was saying, you know, if we go back and we look at it in a year we have something very tangible by which to say, okay, a year ago, this is where we stood. What's, what's different, what's improved, what needs improvement, what has changed, what, uh, not to mention it allows something for our predecessors to have or future commissions to be able to look at or uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, That's a good point. Uh, and not predecessors, but I mean successors. 
that it's, uh, it, it, I, I, I don't know, I thought it was a worthy exercise. I thought Luke, uh, for a very first crack at it, did a very good job with the last presentation. Um, and from my seat, I appreciated looking at it and thinking about some of the things that he was bringing to the to the table, so to speak, with everything, too. I thought it was, it was helpful, it was good to see it, again, kind of in a documented form that is now preserved, um, while the bullet punch lists are good, too. You know, it really just kind of is a task list as opposed to the bigger, broader strokes that I think Luke brought with this presentation. And it allows us to kind of monitor our own progress achievements, uh, uh, negligence, or whatever the case may be over the course of those years from presentation to presentation. I don't know. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, I totally do think. Isabella? I think we are all agreeing on the fact that a walkthrough is more of a punch list, checklist, an extra set of eyes, you know, because somebody didn't notice something, somebody else did, and it's like more immediate, short term kind of. This, th these are my to dos within the next week or month. What the presentation did a good job at is um, kind of get our creative juices flowing and thinking more strategically, long term about you know what do we really want out of this area. Do we want it to be you know, open space? Do we want it um, super maintained, you know, topiaries or whatever? It, it's a very different, a very different process, I think. So, I personally have to say I'm having a hard time detaching myself from the operational, um, micromanaging and asking for specifics and. Um, you know, letting go and focusing on the more strategic, more long-term, more policy. Um, it seems like you are more comfortable with it because this is what your job is. Um, so that's kind of, I think, the um, the issue we have here. Um, you know, what's the commission's role? Do we do we want extra set of eyes? You know, pointing out things or not? We have any comments from the public, Linda, if you want to say something before we do move forward. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I, I just want to mention, I don't know how many of you have been around for five or six years, but I've been going on the walkthroughs for the last five or six years. And what I recall is, at times, they were extremely important because, like Isabel was saying, it's definitely extra sets of eyes. So things are pointed out, things are discussed, and getting the juices flowing, it's like, oh, well maybe we should have steps instead of a handrail. Or, oh, we can't do that because of ADA regulations. Oh, well maybe this or maybe that. You know, it's like getting things going, it's initially um, thinking about the subject, and then we would come to the table at the end, and it would things would be written down, and everybody would have points to talk about. I think the last time everybody had their own individual lists, but previously, I remember when I was on the commission, I took notes and I printed out all the, the notes from everybody's questions and everybody's interest in let's review this or let's go ahead and forget about this one and maybe this is important and maybe we should do this next year or maybe we should worry about this a little bit and we don't have money for that. But what I noticed, and, and this is something in every single one of the walkthroughs, you'd have, if there were 15 people, you'd have five or six groups of people talking to each other. And you keep talking about um, civility and decorum and I think in the beginning well I mean up until the last last year there was never any set way of having these walkthroughs nobody ever said okay this is how we're going to do it this is what we're, everybody's going to pay attention we're not going to talk we're not going to have you know this kind of conversation I mean, that's really hard to do when you've got 15 people, and some of the people are more interested in looking at the birds, and some people are more interested in talking about their children, and there are a lot of times these little chit-chats were chit-chats. 
I mean, people weren't paying attention to what was going on, and nobody was listening about you know the big holes or the big puddles or. And, and I know that um, there were very few of us from the public that were on these walks. But the one time a couple of years ago when that lady, some, some lady who knows all about the Indian culture was on, I mean, she spent, I would say, at least 50% of the time from the beginning to the end, she talked and talked and talked about the me walks, the this, the that, the, the, the graveyards the number of people, um, you know, so it was really casual. And I don't think there was ever an issue about decorum or civility. I can't, I mean, you, you've been to, um, oh, I'm not supposed to talk to her, okay. Um, when I was at the meetings, I don't think there was any ever, any incivility or lack of decorum. It just seemed like it was a real casual atmosphere. Everybody was looking at this. In fact, when it came to the pool area, I remember Gary talking about things around the pool. He was talking about the roof. He was talking about, you know, is the roof going to last long enough for the solar panels? Um, you know, and he was talking about the pump house and how it flooded and near the creek. And I mean, there was so much really, really interesting things that were discussed that I think was very, very important for the commission to know because the commission is supposed to know about the facilities. And it just seems to me that if you have, if you want to have walkthroughs and you want to have them with some sort of structure, you're going to have to say that in the beginning. You're going to have to make a rule and make sure that people don't chit chat and make sure everybody's in a group and I mean, and that's really hard to do. I, I don't think you've seen some of the things that had happened on some of these meetings, but like I said, a whole string, 15 people at halfway down the panhandle talking. So for me, it seems, my, my first thought was, it's too much work for Luke. It's a big project um, divided into five sections where he's gonna have to do paperwork, paperwork, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. That's, that's not what, in my opinion, that's not what he should be doing. Um, I think it's the commission's job to look at the facilities and figure out, right. or just get an understanding of what is going on. Linda, that's your time. That's three minutes, more than three minutes. Thank you. You can just wrap it up for me. Um, I appreciate the support for and against walking, so give me a clear point on what you're saying here. And my clear point is that it's very important for the commission to understand what the facilities have and are for in Marinwood. And wa walkthroughs give the commission a lot of information. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is an action item, so it doesn't have to. Do we want to just continue with your idea of? or excuse me, your idea of kind of moving forward, doing presentations. We may decide we want to take a walk at some point and look at something, in which yeah. case we may need to adjust the time. Um, that sounds good to me. Or yeah. do we want to try to amend language and resubmit this to the board again? Or I, I, I kind of would go with the idea of Let's let it roll for a couple of meetings and see, kind of, you know, get a little better handle on kind of its presentations and the advantages that we see in that. And then hopefully we can then kind of clarify what we're seeking and make a, another present or a proposal to go to the board in a future day. Yeah, no, I agree. That sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. Right. So we'll just, uh, we won't take any action on the item. And we'll just uh, kind of maintain the direction we're in and see what
see where that gets us. And then my only uh, request, I guess, would be when we get back to the point, if it is decided we want to change this up, um, John, assuming you're the chair, or if somebody else wants to take this on, um, let's meet up beforehand and we can work Smith, or uh, everybody can send me a proposed saying, uh, we kind of, you know, off, uh, individually without sending it out to the whole group and, and kind of okay. work on putting something consolidated from there. I think it would be good to get uh, Isabella's point on it too, and her set of eyes, I think she, Certainly uh, was one of the primary authors of the bylaws in the first place, and I think sitting on the board, it'd be nice to say, okay, if this was presented to you at the board, is it clear? Is it this? Is it that? And kind of go from there. I don't, I don't mean to volunteer you, but if uh, if you would, I think it would be great. Sure. Um, and that way, we're not here trying to scrap something together. We can actually hopefully have something that is very close, if not on it presented in the meeting and then fine tune it as needed if needed. And then just one thought is, is do we want to uh, individually when you decide which facility is going to be presented next, do uh, an individual walk beforehand, not as a group and not as a meeting. It's just since we you know the board has didn't approve the motion that way. It's it's not kind of a direct other direction. We're still sort of doing a little bit of both. There's some mm -hmm. eyes on the facility. That makes sense. So we can mm -hmm. have a walk through and so we can bring that to the meeting we're still sort of grappling with which direction we're gonna go. I would suggest the next one personally and Luke might have a completely different opinion than me of uh, just looking at the park as a whole. because uh, there's certainly some uh, issues might not be the right word, but for lack of a better term, there you know there's some things with the park that are on our radars. Uh, give Luke a month or two to work on putting that together and I think in cooperation with, you know, just your time spent at the park. If you have questions about things, send those to Luke uh, and or myself and then we can try to answer those questions within the presentation itself as well. I think would, I don't know, would be helpful. Yeah. You know, our areas, you know, hey, what's this or what's going on there? Or, so, you know, I mean, just get at the broad stroke questions and we can make sure to address very specific areas or just kind of broader themes or whatever you might have. And uh, I think since you're at the park and you see things, make a mental note and shoot us a little email and say, hey, what's going on? You know, you can include something about this or something about that. I don't think it's going on. We have it. We have it. I don't know where it is. I'm going to shoot it on a few blocks. Yeah. I thought that was a burn. Yeah. They literally just did that. Yeah. Smell it. Thank you. Just get that pressure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
locations? I, I mean, I think when we're getting it can always be altered in the future you know, as things come up. You know, it would be the pool facility, I guess. But, uh, you know, we, we have daylight issues. So we may, that may try to start earlier if possible, or I, I don't know what, but. I thought we were doing the presentations. Well, it, it may be a presentation as In well. In which case, that right. it doesn't matter. And then, right. yeah, pool and then the community center, that would be another month. Okay. Okay. I've never been done that. We're kind of in that order. Uh, yeah, and if we can uh, get it done by next month, we will. Otherwise, uh, we'll get the part one on the following month. Okay. To your point it includes a little time to still wind down pool season. The camps just ended last week. So, uh, be able to put some thought in it uh, and go from there. Um, the one thing I did fail to mention, I don't mean to totally back up, but on the minutes, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it in the next one, never mind. Linda, anything to say about oh, our. Really? <laughs> Sir, I don't know what those fumes are, but they're really bad. Um, I guess my only question is, you're going to approve the proposed amendment. What are you going to do? No, we're not going to approve anything. No, no, I, I'm sorry. Let me make myself a little more clear so you'll understand. Here it says proposed amendment and commission action approved. I mean approve. Okay, so that was the whole point of this agenda item. And what I'm asking is, what is actually going to happen about this particular uh, action item tonight. We're going to defer it. Defer. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Anything else about uh, potential facility tour locations? Okay, then we'll move on to item number seven, the uh, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Uh, hopefully you've all had an opportunity to review what was just submitted to us. Is there any additional things you'd like to comment on first, Luke? Um, yeah, so um, just to speak to the fumes, first of all, which I did not include in here, um, so, <laughs> which I didn't realize was happening today, but um, the community, the reception hall floors are getting uh, re-sanded and refinished this week. I believe that we wrapped up tomorrow, so that's what you're smelling is fresh uh, coat and sand on the on the floors, which um, we're which we're both are being more excited about. So smell won't last long, hopefully, but um, that's happening this week, and we're um, excited to get that done before the start of our preschool program and uh, a bunch of our fall classes. So that's taking place this week, and a couple other uh, we're getting a uh, deep clean um, done with the. Bunch of the, the rooms as well going into the fall season this week. Okay. Yes, please. So, is, are the aftercare kids in the building in the afternoon? So, they, um, the aftercare kids spend a lot of time outside uh, and in this room, doors closed, windows open, fan lines. It's, pretty, so. it's pretty, pretty strong. It's gotten a lot worse too. And, hmm. the, the most of the day was done with sanding, and then the actual bar or the finish that was put on the floor was like the end of the day today. So they it, it didn't smell like this all day. Um, it's definitely got it's worse for you guys. So I apologize. But, but yeah, so they were um, you know they were mostly outside today. Strong fans or something to circulate the air. Yeah. We had that, we had that air on also that was helping a lot. Um, I turned it off just because of the noise, but uh, uh, I don't know if it's just recirculating or something. Sorry, did that answer? Kind of, it's just yeah. if it smells strong tomorrow, as it does right now in here, for kids, sensitive kids, asthma, things like that, it's not good for me. It's not really good. I got Oh yeah, well they don't be not there. They're not going to be in the, in the main room at all. Yeah. It'd be yeah, definitely mo mo yeah, exactly. So we only do have studio fans as well. The room is closed for the week. Um, so just the main things to report. We yeah, we finished the our summer 
summer camp season last Wednesday was our last day, and then um, our uh, after school program started on Thursday. But yeah, the season ended, um, ended great. I'm very uh, pleased with how the season went, and we'll be giving you more information as we uh, get get ready to present um, later on this season. But um, been a great summer, and I'm very proud of staff and, and how everything went. Um, both on the campsite and the pool. The pool season's still going until October 11th, but um, the big, the big uh, heavy season uh, is, is done. We'll, we'll transition to the fall as of Saturday. Um, we had our last music in the park on Friday, which I think we had probably maybe think like 500 or so people out there. It's crowded. Yeah, um, great turnout, really fun event. Um, just a few Hornet. Stings, but other than that, it uh, was mostly uh, mostly a great a great event. And uh, our next events will be the the Halloween Harvest Festival coming up on the 11th and um, of October, and then our fall art show after that on the 26th of October. Um, so, Eric, I'm guessing you were mentioning you're gonna, you said I would cover in this report about uh, erosion and what. No. Or, oh no, no. Okay. No, I was uh, actually uh, thinking about the board action and the pool. Oh, gotcha. Um, well, I'll let you. Uh, I'll just, uh, uh, you roll it. Yeah. So, um, one reason I think that the park would be a uh, a good and relevant next facility to cover is just the the as I put in the parks maintenance side of the report. The park staff just completed um, erecting a, a rail fence along the what was that the the northeast end of the. Um, of the, the close field along the, the creek, uh, basically between the plate or the, the, the picnic area and the, um, and the sidewalk. And we've had uh, some. Hold on, I'm trying to get my bearings. Uh, the area where the where we did those plantings oh, okay. um, along the creek. Okay. Uh, on yeah, it, the edge or by the oak, um, or that whole stretch. The whole stretch along. Okay. The creek leading to the the path between the two fields, basically, um, going all the way to where that um, picnic area closest to the to the left side of the playground starts. Right. right. Um, so there's there's a rail fence there now. Split rail. Split rail. And um, part of the impetus for that was that we've experienced a lot of erosion uh, along that bank of the creek this this last few years, and it's gotten uh, especially bad this last year with all the rain. We lost a big tree into the creek um, this spring. It took a lot of earth with it, and that area used to be a, a little bit more of a gradual slip, and now it's a pretty steep drop off. Um, and we was looking at kids chasing balls and just people like hanging out over there with their dogs. It's just a little treacherous. So uh, we we put a fence up to, as a um, as a barrier to hopefully keep people from getting too close to the edge, and. Um, hopefully to buy us some time to, to figure out what you know what we can do to shore up that area. I've got John um, from the straw program coming out in the next week or two to assess and to bring out his erosion specialist friend to kind of look at what's going on there and if there's some plantings that can be done to help shore up the creek there. Um, if we get a really rainy season and the creek's really really flowing, I don't know, it looks like a lot of loose earth, not a lot of bedrock down there, and I'm hoping we just don't lose. We've lost a lot of Park on that side of the yeah, it's getting walkway. close to that paved walkway. Right? Yes, it is, and, and you can see if you look from afar, the whole area is just sort of sloping down towards the creek. So it's just starting to make us a little nervous. So we put the fence up I'm pretty close to the walkway, and um, and then we're hoping we can you know put some things in place, plant some you know some trees or or, or whatever uh, to to hopefully keep from losing much more um, as the season goes on. Uh, so I'll, I'll report when we get some more information on that, back what you know what can be done and what, what our plans are. But in the meantime, there's a fence there, and it, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how the, the staff uh, were able to execute that. It does look nice. The other issue is, to Luke's point, there's not really any bedrock on the park side. The other side is almost entirely bedrock. The, the other the side of the creek bank. Which so, is not Roarywood's property, or no? That's not Roarywood's property. So what? Is, right. right. But the issue is the hydraulic force that's coming through there, is literally picking up steam and bouncing off of that bedrock and just pushing it all over to the other side, which is a much softer, looser, yeah, kind of fill earth. So it's uh, it's kind of like the double 
land. You have all that force coming through. It's meeting great resistance on one side, pushing it to the other side, and it's just the only where place it can continue to carve is on the park side of it. Because it's just not going to carve through that bedrock on the other side. Yeah, and it's, it's been a long time coming. I think we're just at a point now where a lot of those facilities, you know, the park, the, play, the, the turf, the playground, the, the pool, the pump room are all now, all these years later, sitting, you know, precariously close to the to the creek where they once had a lot of buffer. Um, that buffer's, you know, mostly been removed. So, I would definitely love uh, to get some expert eyes on on some of that and to see, like, are we doing okay? Do we do something? Take some action. It's definitely outside of my expertise uh, in terms of erosion and, and creek restoration and, and whatnot. So. Um, but the area that you know where that tree came down just an obvious choice to, to put up something where we don't have um, kids accidentally run off the edge and, and <coughs> tumble or something. So, uh, but we'll definitely be be having we'll look at that and, and, and check that out and recording that. Yeah, and it's a solid 150 yards at least of uh, that split rail that they put up. Too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it literally goes all the way from the end of the path where that uh, storm culvert is right there loops around, kind of follows along the walking path and goes all the way to the other uh, little uh, smaller picnic area on the opposite side of the playground and kind of doubles back in. So it actually kind of frames in where we did all those plantings a couple years ago, sits up around the edge of that towards the walking path and goes all the way along anywhere that there was easily exposed area that you could just kind of shoot down to the, to the bank right there where it's just Crumbling in. Did we install um, a cog wire on that lower rung section of it, or could you act, could a little kid or a dog actually climb through the rails? I mean, yeah, it's not gonna. It's it's almost a get through there. It's it's more of a visual barrier than yeah. an actual. But I think, uh, based the case, like this is the the bit, this is the border of right. the park as opposed to you know 10, 20 feet out where you've got some just sort of tumbling out. And, um, it's not you know it's not some absolute horrendous treacherous fall necessarily okay. it's just um, in years past you could actually walk down that right. area in some in some spots you can't really do that anymore without it's like you I mean I could get down there but I'd, I'd be very careful and right you know well you shouldn't be you're, no. you're gonna move earth with every step you yeah. take over there it's just no. not safe ground um, if it was something that was you know a, a huge cliff with the ocean you know being just a little more but it's more just more visual and, and trying to direct people to, to kind of stay out of that area but, but we'll also see what the recommendations are as we get some, some people to look at that. But that's been a big project this yeah. last month. Uh, staff have been spending a lot of time on that as, uh, along with their other uh, regular maintenance. Um, and uh, yeah, I remember that it came out. I think it looks really nice, actually. Um, and it looks like it's been there all along. I don't know. Um, it just kind of fits in pretty well. So uh, the other big, the big news is, I, I, I know you all heard, uh, I think we might have did we talk about it last meeting? Oh, Victor's retirement, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I've been gleaning everything I can from him this this past month, and uh, just trying to um, you know get as much information and history from him, so that uh, when he leaves, we will hold on to some of that at least. And that's been it's actually been a really fun uh, time working with him and kind of getting his, his take on everything. So I've been documenting all that and. But what we will do is part that on, on staff and, and on, on whether we get to replace them. So that's a big uh, process we've started is advertising and, and we'll be hopefully bringing in uh, possible new candidates soon. Uh, Eric, I think somebody you want to talk about the pool? Yeah. yeah. So before we go there, I have a question Please. about the park maintenance. Um, there was an email, Eric, that you forwarded about the, the um, Las Colinas Park about the hole in the shrubs that kind of a woman, I think um, Lin Linda had um, forwarded it to you or mm -hmm. something, um, was, I, I went and looked at that site, was there a plan to address that? It does seem to me um, that that type of park setting for little kids, there is a parental expectation that there isn't an exit when a child is in that area, a small child, that parent would not be thinking that a kid could get out and they can get out in two locations. There's a break in the hedge and it kind of goes towards the Himalayan Blackberry and down the creek. 
Right, yeah. So, I mean, the, those both of those breaks were created by kids right. over the years, and, you know, uh, so the park's not enclosed. It's got a huge opening, and, um, and we definitely can put new plantings there. Um, it's not, I, it's not clear to I me mean, if that's something that we need to do, we definitely can do that. Um, it hasn't been something that, that staff have deemed I, I do, a necessity. I, as of, as of yet. I do feel like there would be a parental expectation, like I said, that there wouldn't be an exit in there because that park is geared towards, I think, two to five, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. I, I think that is, I think it should be looked at. I think if hedges couldn't be planted in there due to lack of irrigation or whatever, to, to create a physical barrier, then even like some kind of temporary fencing until something could grow up and if that wasn't working um, you, know, you could do not that I'm advocating that we have split all fencing everywhere but I do feel like it's a reasonable concern yeah no there's a, definitely a bunch of things that yeah. can be done to fill that to fill that gap um, I, went, I went and looked at it too yeah and I had, I had the, the, the same thought because it's not obvious there's a break in the hedge that you're sitting like at the picnic table watching your kids play you might not even realize there's a, a break in the hedge because it just visually you can't, see, you can't quite see it. In that area back there, there's also um, a lot of like what looks like uh, kids drinking, like discarding their bottles back there. There was an empty Hennessy bottle mm -hmm. and an empty 12 pack rolling rock. And I've seen kids that are a little bit older than two to five hanging out in that park before because I live nearby it. Probably the so, same ones jumping on our platforms and causing all the. Uh, yeah, they kicked over the trash can. Like, so I think maybe fencing that hole too, or planting over that hole, or doing something might discourage that behind the hedge hiding spot because they're probably hanging out in the park and then well, it also sneaking is a right behind. Well, halfway around to get underneath the roadway there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we see a lot of another kids play. Tag. That's another reason to fence it right there. Oh, is that where the creek runs underneath the yeah. underneath the roadway? <coughs> That's what I've been in shopping cart. Um, at that bridge on Lucas Valley Road uh, a couple weeks ago, as I ran by it. So on Lucas Valley or Los Angeles? It was on Lucas Valley Road, but it was at that the, the bridge that's like on the other side of the fire. Oh, Lucas Valley Road, you can get a different location. Yeah. Yeah, the, we definitely can do something there. The kids do run around through those hedges, like mm -hmm. playing tag and, and whatnot under supervision of their nannies or parents or whatever. I mean, commonly also in there. so. It's one of those things, yeah, if the parent's not aware of, of the setting of the park and not paying attention, you definitely have a kid slip out of your sight. But there's also parents that are watching their kids engage in the kind of run around. So I, I totally understand. We, we definitely can walk that off. It's, it's, it's just, you know, one of those things that um, I see different, you know, perspectives on. Sure that, that, that. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're planting, maybe just starting out with a couple of T-posts and a little snow fence, just you know, to kind of cover that gap and allow, you know, and then planting this fall, allow whatever it is a year or two to do establish before it's, because if, if you just plant and it's open, it'll just get stomped and, but if, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, sure. you kind of back it up with a couple of T-posts and a little bit of snow fans or something just to, I mean, if it, if in lieu of split rail, because split rail isn't really going to stop it. You know, You'd have to do the hog wire fencing too, but no, that's more work, right? So, you know, something like just a, you know, orange plastic stretch and a couple of T posts in each spot. Yeah, it'd be easy enough. Um, any other maintenance comments from the commission? Linda, would you like to comment about our recreation and park maintenance activities? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that um, my email, and hopefully you saw the pictures, that show the two, there's two different places where the bushes are open. And Charlotte, the woman who told me about it, was very, very concerned. And once I saw the one access that was right next to the swings, I realized that once a kid got through, they could tumble down through brambles and rocks and tree roots and they can 
end up falling way into the creek. So I'm glad that you all are aware of it now, and I hope you will put some importance on getting it fixed, because I would not want to see a little three or four year old getting injured. Thanks. Do I have any requests for future agenda items for number eight here? All right, can, can, for future agenda, we can say now or I can email you something in the future, okay, before the meeting. Not at this time. Not this time. Me neither. <laughs> Is there anything else? Um, can I say, are, did you just ask about future agenda items? I asked the commission okay. about future May agenda I items. May I mention something? Or is this just for you all? Yeah, it's for, it's for us. You can mention something in the public comment period. We can choose to agendize it. Uh, future meetings, no right. Well, okay. In, in the past, and, and I know if, if, if it has changed, the structure has changed, and you want to say on here, members only, you know, no public comment here at this time, great, but for the five years, six years I've been coming to the meetings, the public has always been able to suggest something. Make your suggestion. Okay, my suggestion is, I know you talked about it a little bit, about the danger of the gunman with his big Glock, even though it was empty, and the sexual attack and everything else, but I don't know how you all plan on fixing the situation, or at least alleviating some of the situation, but because you are commissioners, and it is a recreational thing, I was thinking possibly safety issues might be an agenda item, unless you wanted to keep it completely quiet and do it behind the scenes. Um, but I, I think if, if you all got together and talked about what kinds of things, I know you've, you've talked to some of the other recreational departments and getting ideas, but I don't know if you'll ever get to a solution so that was my agenda item idea of coming up with solutions. Well, as, as staff stated earlier, they're looking into what they can do or what direction they can take. And when they have something to bring to us, then we will put that on an agenda item and we will discuss it. So it's coming in the future. But we're not, we have nothing to set for next month regarding that. Okay, so you're looking at behind the scenes. No, we're allowing staff time to explore options and opportunities, and once they have those, they will bring them to us and we will have a meeting. Thank you. But it's not next month. Thank you. <coughs> Anything else? And I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Should we go? Second. A second. All in favor? Thank you all very much. Thank you.